in this video we're going to discuss operation costing. So operation costing is a cost system like job order costing and process costing, but it's used when a company makes products that have different raw materials but use an identical conversion process. So ultimately it's a hybrid or a mix of job order costing and process costing. That's a lot to take in, so let's jump into an example. I think it'll make it very easy to understand. So let's take the company Cliff Bars. Now they make a lot of different types of Cliff Bars with different flavors, but let's just say that they make three types of energy bars. Let's make this simple. So they've got chocolate, they've got mint, and they've got apricot. So they've got these three types of Cliff Bars. Now if you think about it, the process of making a Cliff Bar is probably the same. Regardless of the flavor, you still package and bake the Cliff Bar in the same way. However, the materials that go into a chocolate Cliff Bar are probably different, a lot different than the materials that go into an apricot Cliff Bar. So the materials should be costed differently, right? So we should, we're going to have a different cost per unit of materials for chocolate Cliff Bars than we are for apricot. But when it comes to the conversion process, the direct labor, the manufacturing overhead, those are probably going to be the same cost regardless of the type of clip bar. So we're going to use operation costing, and I'm going to show you how that would work out. So we've got three columns here. We've got chocolate, mint, and apricot. And so we've got some budgeted data. Here's the number of units produced. So we're going to make 200,000 uh, chocolate cliff bars, 225,000 mint, and 150,000 apricot for a total of 575,000 cliff bars. And then here we've got the respective direct material costs for each type of cliff bar. So when we go to calculate the direct material cost per unit for chocolate cliff bars, we're going to say 17,000 divided by 200,000. That's going to give us the cost per unit for the chocolate cliff bar with respect to direct materials. We haven't got into direct labor or manufacturing overhead yet. This is just direct materials. And then for the mint, it's gonna be a different cost per unit of direct materials. We're gonna take 42,000 divided by 225,000. And then finally for apricot, it's gonna be $37,000 of materials divided by 150,000 apricot bars. And we're going to come out with a different cost per unit, not just because, uh, so basically think about it like this. The little bits of chocolate that go in the chocolate cliff bar, those bits of chocolate probably aren't going to go in the apricot bar. The apricot bar, however, is going to have bits of apricot. And so that's what's leading to the different cost per unit with direct materials. But as we noted, in terms of conversion cut, remember conversion costs are direct labor in manufacturing overhead. Th those two things together, those are conversion costs. So in terms of conversion costs, it, let's say there are two departments, baking, and then after we bake the cliff bar, they go to the packaging department. So those two departments, those costs, so this is just $75,000 in total for the baking department. Those costs aren't distinguishable by chocolate or mint or apricot. It doesn't matter because making baking a Cliff Bar doesn't matter whether it's chocolate or apricot. Let's just let's just assume that's the case. So when we go to calculate the cost per unit of a chocolate Cliff Bar, we're going to take not only the seventeen thousand divided by two hundred thousand, which is the direct material cost per unit, but we're going to take the conversion cost. We're going to take seventy five thousand and divide it by the total not by the amount of chocolate clip bars but by the total okay so that's going to give us the baking cost per unit and then we're going to get the packaging we're going to have forty thousand, also divided by the total number of cliff bars so that's going to give us the cost per unit uh, for for the conversion costs for baking and packaging so if we were to take a look so let's take chalk chocolate and again i've got we got the seventeen thousand divided by 200,000, that comes out, and I, I've rounded these numbers, so they might be off in your calculations a little bit, but we've got nine cents per unit about, okay? So rounded nine cents per unit of direct material cost, that's 17,000 divided by 200,000. But then the baking, the baking, we've got 75,000 in total baking costs divided by 575,000 total cliff bars. Again, it's not divided by 200,000 when it comes to conversion costs, because this is just accumulated by department, like process costing. So we've got 13 cents per unit for chocolate uh, for, the, for the baking, and then we've got seven cents per unit for packaging. Where did that seven cents per unit come from? It's 40,000, okay, divided by 575,000 total cliff bars. Now notice, when we do mint, when we do apricot, the 
the conversion cost per unit for baking is identical because in each case it's seventy-five thousand dollars right here divided by five hundred and seventy-five thousand total cliff bars again we're dividing by the total number of cliff bars for baking and also for packaging because there's no distinction between baking a chocolate cliff bar versus baking a mint one or an apricot one so that's why these costs are the same here and then they're the same for packaging However, we see the direct material cost per unit is different because these clip bars, even though they're baked the same way, they're packaged the same way, they have different direct materials. So we see that for mint, that $42,000 of cost divided by 225,000 mint cliff bars leads to 19 cents a unit. And then with apricot, we had $37,000 divided by 150,000. That leads to 25 cents a unit. So the only thing that differs under operation costing on a per unit basis is the direct material cost. These cliff bars use different direct materials, so they're going to have different direct material cost per unit. However, they are baked the same way, they're packaged the same way. For that, we just take the total baking cost divided by the total number of cliff bars and the total packaging cost divided by the total number of cliff bars. We make no distinction between type of cliff bar. So they each would have for the baking 13 cents a unit and for packaging 7 cents a unit. Now, when we add up, so for, for chocolate, we've got the direct materials and then the conversion cost in baking and conversion cost in packaging. We end up with 29 cents a unit. That's a per unit product cost. And then for mint, we end up with 39 cents. That's just this column here added together. That's 39 cents. And for apricot, we add this column here and we get 45 cents per unit.